Hey guys, it's Slumming Rush. The D100 light tank is one of the most fun light tanks to play in the game. It leads to just absolutely phenomenal games consistently. With a 40% camel rating and 465 meters free range, it's like epic carries are very common. So today, that's what we're going to be trying for. Oh shit. <laughs> Alright, so for this one, we're on Overlord. Now, Overlord is... Um, <laughs> It's one of those confusing maps because in my opinion one of a really reasonable way to play overlord is to start off by going beach Especially if you're in a light tank because what can happen is by going to the beach You figure out where all their bad players are going and on a map like overlord You really don't have any question where people are going It's like you don't need a whole lot of scouting So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start off by going beach and it's gonna trigger a lot of people But it might be valuable the thing is in a t100 light tank It's like if you start off by going to e2 you're not committed you can leave and go to the nine line no problem, it basically is a teleportation device. So I'm okay with that play. Now, a very common light tank play on this map is kind of playing the bolt. Honestly, that's suicide. Another viable play on this map can be going to F4 and going for early shots. And I think that's very viable. I'm just trying to see if the beach is an okay alternative to like playing here. So let's say for whatever reason, maybe there's three already and multiple lights, you don't wanna go here. I wanna see if the beach is okay because naturally the beach is really already safe. So we're gonna be trying that out. We'll see what we find. If it doesn't work out, <laughs> I'll be a complete retard on video. That's basically what will happen if it doesn't work out. So here we are. We're going to the beach. So it looks like we don't have any support. Looking at the map, it's like the E100 and the T30 might come. But realistically, what's going to happen is I'm just going to be doing a scouting run down here. And then we're going to be leaving. So what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to sit here, see if I can spot anyone. If they send no one beach, that'll be great. Okay, 704. Am I spotted? I've got 40% camo, so he probably won't spot me with 400 meters to range at this range. No shots, okay. So we know, no. So what we know for now is we know they have the 704 down here. What that means is there's no 704 camping at A5. So we kind of know where he is. I would say that's okay information. I think I would have gotten better information if I'd gone up here. But one of the nice things is that I'm not dead yet and I am topped here. So it's like, this time it didn't work out. I'm going to keep trying to figure out if it's a bad place. So like I said, by going to the beach, I can still leave. And that's what we're going to do here. Looking at the map, it's like, they've got... Oh boy. <laughs> it really sucks that our E100 went beach and our T30. What's going to have to happen in this case is we're going to need our E100 to kind of push through. Oh boy. That guy just got penned. That's not his fault, actually. So what we're going to try to do is we've just lost our T10, which is a very strong tier 9 tank. We've got our E100 who's gone beach. We've got our T30 who's gone beach. Those are also two very strong tier 10s and tier 9 tanks in this matchmaking. And what we're going to try to do is I'm going to try to help us win the 9 line. You can see our team is pushing through. So we've actually got a good tier 10 heavy player who's pushing down the 9 line. And what I can do as a light tank is because this has opened up is I can sort of start to get to here and get behind them. Now, a lot of people will make a mistake in this type of... Actually, we're not going to do that. That's way too aggressive. It's like the score are still tied. There's still 28 tanks alive. Anything that's that aggressive... Oh, fuck. HE, 47. Okay, can I hit him one more time? Is the Artie looking at me? What's happening? Artie's not looking. He backed off. Fine, the RU might come. This is a very contentious position, but it might be really useful in a bit here. So, what I was thinking about doing, and what a lot of people would do, is they'd push up to where that Udez is. You'll notice the Udez is really low HP. That's because, given the context of that game, that's way too aggressive for a Udez to be making that play. They're all going to be focusing him down, especially the Ardy and especially any TDs. So for me to try that would be basically suicide. So instead, what you can do is, if you've got heavies here, you can just come to the mid and look for shots on people like that GW Tiger, Ardy that are kind of caught out by the play, and you can manipulate this position to be, like, it's very good at shooting at people like this GW Tiger. So get the kill on the Ardy. That brings us up two tanks. We're leading by two tanks right now. And what I want to do is I want to continue to play this angle. We'll go for the kill on the Sheridan. I didn't expect him to be there, but he was. And the WT doesn't have shots in me. So what I'm thinking of doing is I'm thinking... Oh, is that an AFK E5? This is why we're winning this one. Okay, now we need damage. We absolutely need a lot of damage in this case with that... Oh, fuck. Who do I kill here? RU. I'm just going to go for the lowest HP. So if we can get the RU to ram me, good. Get a shot onto that PTA. It's not a PTA, it's just a leopard. If I can get out of here. Okay, so I just lost a lot of my HP. That, that's what happens when you play aggressively. I didn't really expect to get rushed by three tanks, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get a shot on the leopard one. And basically we're gonna line up shots on people like the bat shot, the leopard one, which are gonna try to still do well considering the circumstances. Leo just fired. Bat shot's looking at me, so I need to back off. If that bat shot yolos me, I'm screwed. So I need to be really careful. Let's see. Bat shot's there. Is he where's he looking? E5 just came back, okay. 
Good, put a shot into the bad shot. He's now a one shot. I really high rolled that one, so we might be able to hit him here. Good, get the kill. Leopard one is next. Leopard one doesn't notice me, so I'm actually just gonna push into him considering he just fired. Good, and now we're gonna go after the T30 to try to get a bit more out of this game. T30 is a one shot, so we can maybe go after the T30 and then the E5. Good. <laughs> what? <laughs> I just ended up getting all the kills. That was a top gun. <laughs> Maybe we can get seven. Okay, that's the game. That was actually a really shitty game. I'm gonna go play another. We're not even gonna look at the end plates. There's no point. Let's just go play another, and hopefully that will be like a, a more interesting game. But honestly, considering we went beach on Overlord, that's, you know, staying alive is very important at the beginning of the game. So it's okay. I wouldn't suggest it just yet though. So for this one, we're on Tundra, and Tundra is actually one of, like, I really enjoy the map. I think it's very challenging to do well on, and one of my favorite plays on Tundra is to play the one line. Now, in this case, we're in our T100 light tank, and a lot of people feel that the hill is pivotal to winning the game on Tundra. So what we're going to be doing is, because the matchmaking facil facilitates it, and we're in, like, a tank that allows us to do it, is we're going to try to play the hill, and I'm going to kind of show you how I adapt to playing the hill. Now, understand I'm not used to it, so... Very high probability that this is going to fail, but, uh, you know, we're going to try to take the hill. So, you know, what you want to do is, like, you look at the enemy team lineup when going to the hill. You see they've only got the 140, the Sheridan, and the WZ, and, and maybe the 54. And those are tanks that are likely to go to the hill, and so, like... You know, if you're going to commit to a position, you want to make sure it's okay. So what we're going to do is this T100's leading, and I'm going to make sure I watch who's coming. And I, if there was a tank there that I thought I couldn't fight, like, for example, the tier 10, like the 140, I would have just stopped and not gone. So from here, it looks like you have some shots. Now, one of the problems with playing a position like this is you have to come all the way over the edge if you want shots in people. So this time, one of three is pushing forwards. He wasn't paying attention. I put a shot into him. He doesn't seem like the best of players, partly because he's yoloing the middle of the map, and then also partly because he looked this direction direction after I shot him so I'm gonna you know I'm aware of that now this 140 just shot and he's looking away so I'm gonna put a shot into him you can see the one the t54 actually is camping me so um you know what you want to do in a situation like this is it's a very aggressive position you should expect a couple of things you should expect Artie to be focusing you down and then you should also expect anyone who's kind of close to you to be focusing down because you're so far ahead of everyone that you need to be very like, that's just going to happen. So, you know, what I like to do on a position like this is I try to look for shots on people who are unsuspecting. So, for example, 50 TP, he's in a weird position, but you can actually get shots all the way to C1 from here. And then also what's happening is as these guys push through, I'll have shots in them. So, I need to make sure as I back up that no one... I want to hit the, these guys, basically, and see if I can hit the Progetto and try to help out my buddies. So, it looks like I'll have shots in the Progetto from here, which is perfect. And I'm just going to try to help out that STRV. I wasn't able to save him, of course, like this thing reloads every six seconds, but from here we're able to put shots into people like the Progetto, who's trying to flank us, and this M103 if he pushes forward. So the M103 is a one-shot, he's going to be falling back, obviously. The next thing is kind of understanding that this Progetto is going to, like, push. So what I'm going to do is I don't expect anyone to be ready for it because I'm 70 HP, and it's like, here's this opportunity, there's a Progetto, we can put shots into him, and then once he dies, we can also go after the M103, who will be a one-shot in a sec here. So Yudas kills the Progetto, good. And now I wanted to engage the M103, but on second thought, this Fosh here will probably YOLO me. So, how can I engage the M103, like, kill him without, you know... Well, okay, so I left the hill because we are pushing into, like, campers, right? It's not a good place. So, going after this M103 is fine. He's definitely committed, and he's looking away right here. So, I'm going to drive forwards, aim with third person on the side of his turret. That gets me the kill, and now they've got a Sheridan pushing through. So, we don't know where their Fosh is. That's an SU-130, so let's get safe from him. And let's also go after that Sheridan who's totally wrecking our SU-130. Hopefully, we can save him. Let's see. Good. Okay, good. We saved that SU-130. Now they've got one here. And so now this game's a bit of a tie, and what's happening is we're starting to lose the hills. So what you can expect on the zero line on this map is what will happen is the team that's defending almost always has the advantage, especially when the enemy team has five TDs like this, because even though their TDs are pretty much in the mid, actually, what happens is anyone who's sitting back here has perfect shots on people pushing into that side of the map. So, you know, we're losing that side. It's no surprise because we actually won the hill they're going to be at an advantage. And so what I want to do is I want to retake the hill almost and see if I can kind of help out and be somewhat... Let's try to get by here. 
I might take hit. No, I didn't. Okay. You can often make plays like that because no one's expecting you. But basically, I want to see if I can put shots here because I don't expect the zero line to be successful. So I need to make sure we're like doing okay on other sides of the map. So this Tiger is giving me shots. Biggest threat right now is actually the GW100 and TDs who start like focusing me down because I'm on the hill. But if I can help out with tanks like the Tiger, maybe this SU-130. He's not even looking. So maybe the SU-130. Good. And so on. It's like, that's why this position is so strong. It's like, no one's suspecting. Now, interestingly enough, we managed to kill everyone on the zero line. So what's going to happen is I'm going to start to prepare my tank to leave the hill. Uh, you know, basically the second shots run out, we're going to leave because from here we should be able to actually do not very much. Like in my experience, if you play the hill, the shots only last for a certain amount of time. So let's see, 54, no shots. All right. So at this point in time, you'd kind of expect, you see the map right here, right? We're coming in from this direction, we're coming in from this direction. As a light tank, you would kind of expect to win this, unless there were some like extraneous circumstances. So in this case, you generally would want to double check before YOLOing in, because often you'll lose games when you're in this situation. But we have so much HP that I'm just going to be able to be very aggressive. Look for shots on no one, evidently. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and from here, we're just going to try to get as much damage as we can. So what I'm gonna first going to do is we're going to go for Artie, and then after Artie, we're going to go, go for the AMX. He's 1,000 HP, and after the AMX, we're going to see what we can find. Now, this guy's probably going to hit me, but I go to the right because he probably would have... I go to the other side that he would have expected. <laughs> okay, we pick up... What? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> this is where I get penned, right? God fucking damn it. Good, okay, someone else got the kill. No shots in the SU-130. The next target's the AMX, and that will actually be... Oh, boy, I wonder if I can get 5k out of this. Okay, so here we need to make sure this guy doesn't fall back, right? Because what will happen is my teammates will get damaged. So I'm okay if he shoots me. I want him to stay away from my teammates because I want to get one more shot of damage, right? So he's going to drive forwards. Perfect. My turret's damaged. Good. We're up to 5k. Now maybe we can get the other kill. Hopefully he stays uh, away from my teammates. Perfect. Oh, fuck. <laughs> God fucking damn it. <laughs> hey, but we did hit 5,100 damage. So... That's how you'd kind of play the zero line on this map in like a 200 light tank. Uh, <laughs> I think I might have to start doing that if there's less mediums on the enemy team. Because sometimes what can happen is everyone goes there and it just sucks. But if not a whole lot of tanks go to the zero line, it's like, it's definitely a very strong position. So that was a mastery badge, second class, high caliber, 606 spotting. So not a whole lot of spotting. It's like, it's Tundra. You can't really expect that. Uh, we ended up making 38,000 credits because we shot a lot of APCR. In the T100 light tank, you really don't need gold. Like, there's no difference. It's not worth the extra 4,400 credit. You know, the 4,400 credit shell price for the gold ammo. So I'm starting to load a lot more APCR in this than I used to because credits matter. So yeah, we fired 20 shots, 18 of them penned. That's what you can expect. Like 5,100 is what you can expect from that. And um, yeah, that's the game. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button. And uh, 